Good evening, folks. Um, going live with Benetti Menswear. And we're going interviewing Noli O'Leary today. Hopefully, Noli will um, log in and won't mess me up. Like the bowl Damien Delaney did the last day and Muggsy before him. Looking forward to this now. That, um, I would have great respect for Noel O'Leary and everything he has achieved. Uh, I just like his attitude. I like his style. I like the way he does things. Uh, there's never any shite with him. Um, and he's a good, solid fella as well. And here we are. Oh man, no. Waiting for Noel, you know. Noel. Mas. How are you, boy? Jesus, I never thought I'd see myself in this yacht, but in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, no. I never thought we'd see ourselves chatting on this after all the years, and we're here sitting on a freaking, I'm looking into a phone, I don't know you're looking into a laptop. I'm looking into a phone as well, yeah. Not a great phone now, but it's Louis Nespas. Come here, I suppose. Uh, no, no crack. No crack, by no crack. You weren't, um, is Instagram new, Chuck? Is, uh, were you on it before, no? In, t- no, never, not. No, no, no. This is, a, this is the first time now. Jesus, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go, but anyway, <laughs> we, we give it a rattle, anyway, I suppose. Uh, it'll go fine, it'll go fine. I was just going to say with the Instagram now, where you'll have to start posting tops of yourself training in the back garden with nothing yeah. on and, and uh, you'll have to throw up a few Ooh. dinners and all that kind of crack what you're eating in the morning and uh, yeah. it is it is a funny the social media in general no have you, have you anything on Twitter or anything do you follow it at all no 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 I'm on none of it no you're, pro- oh, you're, you're probably way- is as far as it goes no and you're probably way better off without it as well aren't you I suppose there's a, a bit of that you know it was something that never took my fancy you know, to be honest but um Sure, I suppose is the way things are going. Mm-hmm. You know, no, but um, yeah, you'd never know. Sure, I could. I uh, got on my dick. Could be a mighty Instagram man after this. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. I tell you, I'm on Twitter myself, and uh, I, I I threw it up on whatever day, Wednesday, whatever day. I was t- chatting to you there, and I said uh, that yes. Noel O'Leary was around. There was a fierce amount of interest in it, and one of the first men that came in, and he says, "Will you ask Noel O'Leary?" Uh, or ask him about the night I broke his ribs down in Parky Creeve to his, to his dear Mador Sullivan the Rock and I said fuck it I'd, I'd have to ask you what happened there at all did he was that the time he was playing the football was it? It was it was yeah that was that was um, geez, that's a while ago now it was um, we met him at in the championship uh, I'd say around 2003 yes, I suppose but um, he was in full forward and of course he was he, he was having a good enough game, a good man to win the ball inside, and um, geez, I think we were up a point at the time, and uh, geez, time was nearly up, and um, of course, I was moved in the minute to make sure that that he didn't get the ball, but the time nearly up, and uh, the ball came in high in it, and geez, I just happened to get a hand in it, and caught it kind of over his head, and of course, got a step in him, he was slow enough in it at that time, so, <laughs> um, got a bit ahead of him in it, and of course, had a bit of a tickle in from behind. Uh, drew a slap, of course, in behind. And uh, <laughs> I'll always remember it. Uh, like that in the story, the blood was up, so it didn't seem as bad at the time. But um, I was training with Cock two nights after. And um, Brendan Jorah Sullivan. Do you remember Brendan Jorah? <laughs> I do indeed. Brendan Jorah, yeah. Brendan had a ritual in it that, you know, every night at training, he'd hit a lad a false rap of his shoulder <laughs> just when he was coming out of the tunnel. And Jesus, I was coming out in here, and uh, your man came from nowhere, the jerk, and gave me a waffle shoulder. And Lord God Almighty, my ribs! I could feel a dark wind on my ribs, and I knew something wasn't right. So, when kicking a ball in the outside, and same story, got a dark so I went into Colin Lane, and um, of course, the first thing Colin asked was, "What was the urine like with the last couple of days?" So I said, "Was that a dark knee bit all right?" <laughs> and uh, he said, straight up to the CUH, so up I went in here, and of course, two two fractured ribs in here, I was diagnosed with. Oh, so, the lad never left it going in, but um, I, he'd won over me, but, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, as well as I said, you were always looking for payback. Yeah, I was but, just uh, going to ask. A few years ago, you know, yeah, 
couple of years ago, we, we went for a, a sojourn out to San Fran there and a bit of a do. And um, of course, I was in the room with the lad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sure. Every day he'd say, you know, he'd want about breaking my ribs and this and that. And I was, you know, thinking to myself, how in the Christ will I even score here now? So I said, it's probably not a good idea to take, take him in, in daylight, you know. And I said, you know, I'll, I'll wait now until he goes to bed. And I, I let him sleep for a small bit, and I tackle him inside in the bed. Didn't <laughs> so, of course, we went out. We went out that night, and yeah, and he was full of stout, and then back home we went to the room, and of course into bed he went, and and next thing the hunker started going, he started snoring, and I said, now was my opportunity. So, I got a pillow, and I walked over and put the pillow over his head just to disorientate him a small bit, and I tell him again a farewell to inside <laughs> in the bed, and when you. We do hear a grown man asking for his mammy. I can tell you one thing, it's fairly, it's fairly satisfying. It's fairly satisfying. So we're, we're all even in it. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. That was my second question. Did you get him back? You got him back well. Oh, Christ. Oh, we got him back well. We got him back well. But anyway, yeah, he's... He, I know a good friend of the Yerman now. He's, 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 yeah, he's, he's a soul a, man. Yerman is a, is a good friend of mine. Soul man. He's yeah, soul man. yeah. Come here. I was just thinking he's there. Boy. I saw it earlier. I think if I'm right, if I have my dates right, <coughs> this was the weekend that Kerry and Cork were supposed to meet if they were meeting this year. And right. I suppose they were going down to Parky Creeve again. And you know what? You'd actually, I know it's going on a while, but you'd miss the old. Mm. Wouldn't it be good to look forward? You, did you look, after you finished up Noel, would you have gone to games? You yes. still followed them? Would you go to all the big games and all that? I would have, yeah, I would. Um, sure, I suppose, look where I'm from, Tomas. Sure, obviously, you know, um, I'd be close enough to the bar, so football would have been huge back in my area. And um, I suppose growing up, you know, as a young lad, my father would have brought us to an awful lot of games. And, um, yeah, you know, some lads can find it difficult when they give up football to go to games. And I suppose, you know, it can be tough trying to get back into the game and follow the team and whatever. But um, I kind of, to be honest with you, you know, when I gave up, I kind of got back into it straight away and certainly followed their progress, you know, as, as the thing was going on. And um, I'd certainly miss it big time, yeah, mm. big time this year now, to be fair. And the the Parky Creeve, and I know, look, I'm living down here, and a lot of people have been given out, and so I think, uh, Noel, it's a fantastic stadium now, like, would you, would you have, have loved to have played, even though the old Parky Creeve was still a fine stadium, and it was a lovely kind of surround on yes. it and all, what do you make of the, the current right. Parky Creeve? Yeah, like, you know, I suppose, to ask you know, the crack, I suppose it got a lot, of, a lot of bad publicity, but sure, you know, at the end of the day, there's a, there's a serious stadium there, mm. and... Um, it's just a shame that this happened. I suppose they need it. I suppose, you know, with the pitch being done up now as well, that was obviously an issue as well at the start. But, um, you know, there's, an, there's a fine surface there now. And, um, you know, it was ready. It was ready as well as to rock and roll. But this thing obviously hit in. And um, it's disappointing. You know, I, I, I'm certainly impressed with the stadium there. There's no doubt about it. It's probably one of the best in the country. And, um, look, as you say, as a footballer, you know, you'd love to... Love to have got yeah. an opportunity to play there and, and, and must have found there, whatever, you know. Yeah. I'll go back to, to you were talking about the club there, Nolan. Your, your club would be very mm -hmm. similar to our own in that there was no, there's no yes. hurling in Kilimatra, is there? There's not. No, 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 no. Kind of, I suppose, back our way, back our way, we're kind of, um, I suppose, how would you say, mid Cork, kind of west of mid Cork. Yeah. Um, you've no, 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 you've no hurling there. No, none whatsoever. It's all football. What's your, um, yes. What's your, what are your early memories? Like you said, your your dad used to carry you off to games. What are your earliest memories? What age would you have been starting off at the club? Oh, sure, I suppose. Kind of from five or six years old, we'd have been picked up and um, brought to sessions then, all right. But um, you're in numbers to mass would have been a big issue at the time. Mm. You know, we would be tight there, to be fair. It's a small parish. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that would have been, I, I, I'd say about six years old, you know, you would have been, as I said, you would have been cornered and, and brought along around that age. Like, but, um, you know, like I say, look, football was everything to us back there, you know, we'd not soccer either, you know, we'd see a lot of that in, in country clubs as well, but um, you know, it was just Gaelic football for us. And the club, Noel, was always very important to you, like, and you did, you got to huge, big games. The last few years, you had a lot of good young fellas coming through, didn't you? Hmm. We did, we did, to be fair. Um, yeah, like, I suppose, look, you know, going back to when we, we became successful, I'd say, back maybe in the late 90s or that way, um, 
it kind of took a crop of young lads kind of to merge in with the older crew at the time. We hadn't been very successful as a club. Um, we were not, I suppose, we were really a junior B club for a long time. And um, she and all the crack herself, you know, there was a few brothers, you know, mm-hmm. came along, young lads and, and uh, the likes. And she, um, you know, it kind of tied together then. And um, we went to our first New Cup final in 99, last after replay. And um, then in uh, 2002, we made the breakthrough and um, won it again in 2003, the McCark, and uh, went to the county final and went up then intermediate. But we went we went a good few years then, you know, near misses and the likes. But um, we, I suppose, we, it came to stage then again, where I suppose our generation was getting a bit older mm-hmm. and... Uh, we were lucky enough then that a new crop came in again there and we have a good young team, but it's like a lot of small clubs. We're very dependent on 20 players, really, you know. Yeah, it was always the way. And you are, like, mm. you're a Gata Fairy as well and you would have travelled to Comortas. Right. And I, I, I was watching you That's on right. television a couple of years ago. The Comortas are a great crack, no other than that. Great, great crack. Great crack, but uh, Jesus, after the after the third day, I'll tell you one thing: you'd be you'd be creaking. creaking. <laughs> and, uh, you, you can ask you can ask Mark about that. That was uh, Jesus. I always remember ringing him after that game. Jesus, I felt like an eight-year-old man that day. But uh, that myself and Mark had a bit of a clash that day. I, I had a good scar on my shin bone after him. I forgot that. I was going to say you were creaking, but I'd say the old Mark he was creaking after you as well after the weekend. Right. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, no, 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 no. And also, it is a great whole weekend, to be fair. Great weekend. Yeah. It is, it is, do you know what? Is, say, socialising. Do you always, and I used to always find it, you have good crack with the lads, the mm. inter-county fellas, and you know them so long, and you're with them so long, and, you know, you have a certain crack there, but there's nothing like having the crack and the banter and, say, winning or losing or whatever yes. journey you go on with the club, isn't it? It's, it's actually, like, it, I, it, I didn't realise it at the time. There's something, yeah. Mm. There's something, bit different. yeah, there's no doubt. It's, I suppose, growing up with guys, I suppose, all your life, really, you know, and, and, and there's always that connection there, and, and um, the Comortis really brings that out, to be honest it with you, you know, know. Um, just being away, being away from home, and, so, you know, normally we socialise in, in the same places, you know, but, geez, when you're back in, when you're, when you're back in, in Kerry, or you're up in Donegal, or in Galway, or whatever it is, it, it's on its ash, it's unbelievable. Right? It can take a long time to get home out of it, no, that's the only problem. Oh, God, that is a fact. Uh, come here. When did when did you start off with Cork? When did you actually say minor level? Now, did you play you played I, minor with Cork, didn't you? I did. I did. I I played um, I played two years minor, ninety nine and two thousand. Um, and uh, we won the All Ireland in two thousand then. Um, and I was brought in into the senior panel. I suppose we won in September. It was actually before your game uh, against Galway. Um, the senior game. But yeah. um, it won that uh, against Mayo, and uh, I was brought in in October in 2000. Jeez, you, course, you were young, no, weren't you? That time, I was young, I was young, yeah. yeah I was 18 years old, and uh, myself and Conrad Murphy from Clannacilty, oh, yeah. we were the two that were brought in. But um, we played Limerick, I can always remember it. The league that time was played yeah. in December, yeah. the first couple of games. And um, Jesus, I remember being brought on. I remember at the same time my father was dead against me playing senior football at that at that age. You know, he wanted me to play when I was about maybe twenty, twenty one, I was more mature. Yeah. And um I never told him that I was in with boys. <laughs> and uh Jesus, this went on for weeks and God oh, I'm waiting tonight. I was thinking, how will I come around this now with himself? Oh, were you hiding but, hiding the fact that you were going training like and all that? Oh I was, I was, yeah. Oh absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But um Jesus, we played Limerick in the in the league in below on Parky Kiev, and I came on with Jesus, uh, I don't know, with twenty minutes to go, and Jesus, didn't I take a shot from about forty five yards out, and she went <laughs> straight into the net, a complete fluke job now, and sure of course, you there was, there was a bit of chat about around the area then, and sure I knew fine well himself would hear it back, Jesus Christ, they heard it in here, and uh, man, I can tell you one thing. I got some. I got some earful after that night. Oh, oh, yeah. like you know, he 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 came around to the the idea of it anyway. But I, to be fair to the man, I I, I suppose I could get his his point on it. I, I was young. I was young. All right. To be fair, um, you know, I was only eighteen, and we were going against seasoned characters at the time. And you know, 
he probably had a point maybe maybe if I wait another year or so you know a bit more mature and get a get on to on under my belt or whatever you know but uh, it don't mean no harm either you know? there's a big difference Noel between between minor and and senior isn't it even the level like you think you're developed well, as a minor and you go in and look it is some right. it is some difference isn't it uh, it's unbelievable yeah it's unbelievable and uh, the, the characters then you know you're dealing with you're dealing with guys, you know, that are maybe few years older than you, and then you're obviously dealing with the very experienced guys and trying to, you know, trying to figure out how you'll strike up a relationship with them. And you know, it's there's a lot of that involved in thing as well. And you're looking in time when you get in there and you get used to guys, it, it all falls into place. But there's a lot involved in it, like you know, the, the, it's the physical side of it, obviously as well. Like, yeah. it's, you know, it's a huge step up, as you say. Like, who were the who were the the senior fellas when you landed in first? Who were the big boys at, at the other end? <laughs> I suppose the the big boys and the other in that time would have been Kiran or Sullivan. Yeah. No, um, Joe Kavanagh, Colin Carkery, Carkery, um, you know the current manager. Carkery was a good man for the training, yeah. though, wasn't he? Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> uh, Carkery was a. I look you over the wall here just while I'm saying that. But anyway, uh, oh, Jesus, Carkery. Ah, yeah. uh, well, he he no, changed oh, himself. Geez, I always remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I can always remember Tankins trained us one night. It was the hardest session I ever put on in my life, and but I'd say we trained for two hours that night, uh, constant running, and I'd say Cockery was up on the table inside with the physio for about an hour and three parts. Jesus, I always remember it. And the one man that needed us, but yeah, that's talent for you, right? That's yeah, talent. he could kick the ball. No, we'll give him no, a pass. We'll could... give him a pass. Oh, jeez, he could kick the ball as well. Oh, jeez, he could kick he the ball, but... Um, Ah, yes, he was a top man. He was a top man. Oh, to be fair, one one of the best. Of them. He was. I tell you, with the, I got to know him right. very well with the Nemo lads. And uh, Jesus, if you sat down with him for an hour, I tell you, you'd laugh hard. Uh, yeah. the tears coming down your face. He oh, was a, good. Who were the characters on the team? No, did you have? Did you have good? Did you find it hard to blend in when you were a young? Uh, yeah, like I, I, uh, Jacob's, I suppose the characters at the time would. Uh, <laughs> Owen Sexton, Brendan Jor now obviously yeah. was another was another fierce character. Um shoot Conrad and Mihala Sullivan was another guy, Mihala Donovan. They were kind of the they were kind of the jokers of the pack like, but um they they were so many now to be fair, you know, they had gone through the bill, they played in all in the final and you know, the experienced guys, but they really took us under their wing now to be fair. So yeah. many now, so many and they're a gas cracker. Eh? That's right. I was um I like I obviously was with Kerry and when you're even from a young age, it is always Kerry Cork, Noel, isn't it? No matter what's happening, yes. like Kerry Cork and the fact that you were so close to the border at home, it probably meant that little bit more yes. to you and there was a lot of talk about it. But from one end of the year to the other, it was all about the championship meeting of Kerry and Cork, wasn't it? There was something special about it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is, there is. Um and you know, I suppose for for us, and I'd say you're probably the same. I know it's a fight to God for a Cartman to be saying, but there's there's probably nothing beats Killarney. You know, mm. it, it, there's just something really, really special about the place. Um, you know, uh, just I, I suppose it's just the tone is so near the pitch there, and the atmosphere is is electric for the whole weekend there. Um, it's obviously a great tone as well, but yeah, like I, I like I say, I grew up with all that, grew up with all that, and. Um, Probably grew up in a, in, 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 in a great, I suppose, stint at the time in, in that Cork were very dominant. You know, Cork, that, that great Cork team of the late 80s, yeah. early 90s, like, you know. Um, so, yeah, like for me, you know, a, a great days now going there as a young lad. I'll, call, I'll come to Conor Coonan in a while because you played under mm. serious managers too. When you think of it, you know, like you talk about the late yeah. 90s and Tompkins was there for a while and then Billy came in and Jesus, you couldn't get two more kind of Christ heroes of the game in their own playing right but jeez I, and I, I've seen Billy involved with UCC and jeez I've never like I, I Paddy's the closest guy I can get in terms of passion and fellas wanting to go through a wall for him and the way he can bring college fellas together yeah. Like it, it was special, I'd say, playing under him as well, isn't it? To some experience like Absolutely yeah, it was it was it was like <clears throat> playing with playing under Tompkins you know he would have been a uh, you know a big hero of mine mm. growing up you know, and um, I suppose obviously the club we play with Castlehaven then as well, you know, I'd, I'd certainly have looked at them with a lot of their games as a young lad actually as well, you know, and they, I suppose you could kind of, how would I say, a lot of what they had, you know, they were small club, Castlehaven, and had, you know, 
these mighty men in Calan and and um, Kiri and and Tompkins and um, I just took a lot from them at the time. But anyway, you know, ended up obviously training under Tompkins and um, you know he was a ferocious man to train, like yeah. ferocious. Um, and like you know the stuff we went through with him there was was unbelievable at times, you know. But I I just you know I suppose. In the early 2000s, uh, I've often said this, you know, Nemo were very dominant yeah. as a club. And we found it very hard, you know, we were missing the Nemo lads yeah. for three or four months of the year. And just the whole dynamic changed when they came back in. They were brilliant players, jeez, don't get me wrong, and, mm-hmm. and like great guys as well. But we could never get it right, yeah. you know, whatever it was. But then obviously, you know, Tompkins, you know, resigned in, I suppose, in 2003. And um, I felt sorry for him, to be yeah. honest with you. you know, um, we lost to Limerick, lost badly to Limerick that year. And um, Ross Common didn't knock us out above in, in Hyde Park. And um, uh, Tom was got a bad doing that time. But the whole thing was at a low ebb, you know. And um, then obviously Billy came in. And like you say, the man was, you know, I've never come across mm. a guy as passionate and as infectious. And, you know, he really... He really kind of, I suppose, that team in the late noughties, you know, his fingerprints were really all over that as well. You know, we he, we really needed that man to come in at that time. And even though we didn't have a lot of success with him, you know, he instilled an awful lot of belief in us. And, um, yeah, just a, a great, great guy. She's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. I remember he he, he was in charge and it was strange for the final, wasn't it the final in 2007? And, jeez, I remember the build That's up. Even to forget about the game. No, I'm not going to be going down the, yes. to talk about results and all yeah, that. Yeah. But the freaking build up to yeah. that game, and I was living in Cork at yeah. the time. So it was for because it, mm. it was the first time ever that two Munster teams had ever met in an All Ireland final, and it just shows so, the dominance and how good the teams were at the time. Because very often we'd be told, yeah. and we fellas we laughing at us saying, "Oh, you're sure you?" They'd be kind of did that bother you? Know, let's say they'd say that Cork were were. Um, and it bothered me, and I'm not just saying it now, but the fact that say people would say yes. the car for us after did, did that bother you? Like saying that say oh you were second fiddle and that Kerry had to play nothing below in, in Munster, which I don't agree with anyway. But yeah, yeah, um, I should sure look. Jesus won't be human unless you know unless it did bother you. To be fair, you know yeah. there was there was a bit of that going around. Um, I, I would say I would say to Mars that in zero seven. I would have no complaints on that when I felt Kerry were a better team than us. You know, yeah. I did genuinely. I just felt like we we certainly had no qualms on that one. You know, um, but uh, I suppose the later years certainly, you know, there have been years that we'd have, you know, zero eight. Uh, we obviously went to replay above and um, in the semi final. That was a game, you know, that we could have we could have taken it possibly. And and zero nine then obviously was. Was a very disappointing year, you know, in the finish up for us. I suppose we played all the football that yeah. year, and you know, Kerry probably didn't yeah. come into it. You know, they, they they came in under the radar, and it was a kind of an unusual situation in that you know, I suppose going to an All Ireland final, you'd have felt that you know Kerry might have been you know fairly fairly hot favourites coming to, but it was really you know the opposite because we had just beaten Tyrone, who were, who were All Ireland champions at the time, and beaten them. Convincingly as well, but 14 men, you know, played played well now, to be fair, on the day. So, like, all the farmers with us mm. uh, coming into it. And, um, you know, it just, I think it just fucking, we let it slip on the day, you know. We had opportunities and it just didn't happen. But um, but uh, that's it. That's the way it goes, you know. Yeah, I that's was, the way it goes. that team then, when you had, you kind of came, you had a group. And I, I can even feel it now since then, like, there was a togetherness with that group when you won the Division 2, you won three Division 1s in a row. Mm. And finally, you Noel, know, then you actually got what you deserved. You were good enough to win in All-Ireland and you actually mm. did it. Tell me what it meant, Shaw, to finally, to get over the line. Like, it must have been, is it, is it obviously is the biggest day of your of your footballing life, is it? Yeah, yeah, sure, no doubt. Look, sure, th- th- there's no doubt in that, I suppose. Yeah, again, sure, going back to my, 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 my youth, I suppose, it's it it's the thing you always dream of, you know. Winning in all in with your county is probably the biggest honor you can achieve. And um, yeah, look, it was it, 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 in a funny way it was relief as well, you know. Yeah. Um, 
like 2010, we probably, you know, we certainly didn't come anywhere near, um, I suppose, the football that we played in 09. Mm-hmm. And um, I just felt that, I suppose, look, we can talk about it now. I suppose we, you know, deep down, we probably wanted Kerry in that All-Ireland final in 2010. And Kerry were knocked out and obviously you had your problems down there and missed a few players and whatever. And, you know, when you were knocked out, I felt that, you know, we were, it was ours to lose then, really, yeah. you know. We felt an awful lot of pressure. And, um, yeah, just uh, all our games after that, you know, we, we were, you know, just about getting over the line. It was more fucking nervous and, I suppose, the, the just the weight of expectation then was huge. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, look, to get there was just relief, but obviously, Jesus it was, was definitely one of the best days of my life, yeah. The, the, the semi-final against Dublin, I thought, and when I thought it was looking like like you had it. My, you all right? Yes. You, my fucking uh, earplugs are off. One second, Otomas, and I'll, I'll plug this letter in here. Your grand, by your grand. Take your time. <laughs> I'm back to the old school stuff here now. You're a fucking I've all, You're can you hear me there, Tom? I can, perfectly, perfectly. I was just saying, the Dublin game, I thought that was where, I won't say you won the All-Ireland, but it looked like it could have slipped away because that Dublin team was coming, the famous Dublin team, the British boys, there's still a few of them around the place, but that team was coming and Dunnock, I thought, had a brilliant second half, but that was a huge mm. win for Cork. I think going into the to the to the final because you can say the Kerry were gone, yeah. but Dublin were still at Dublin were as hungry as you were yeah. known for it. Yes, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't disagree with you. I I suppose the big thing that told on that day, Tomas, was experience. Really, you know, like you know, I always remember it. Ten minutes into that game, or sorry, ten minutes into the second half of that game, like you felt, geez, this this Dublin team, like they're. They're really coming, getting stronger and getting stronger. But there was definitely a sense of calm in our team at the time. You know, um, you didn't feel that lads were, I suppose, uh, how would you say, like that that the game was really going from us either. You know, yeah. we we just, I was just, look, it was just a case we'd gone through the mill so many times and, and come across this so many times. And, you know, we just kept our head, kept, you know, kept, Cloggy away, kept tippy away, and eventually it kind of ground Dublin down a bit. I think the inexperience told in with Dublin. They made a few yeah. bad mistakes, to be fair about it. And um, we were just that bit more experienced than them, to be fair, you know. And um, you could see, I knew from that day, like you could see that, you know, what was ahead, you know, and, and, and they proved it. Yeah, because there was a lot of fellas, yourself and Kenty, um, Pierce O'Neill, there was a pile of fellas around for a while, Paddy Kelly, Dunica, that, mm-hmm. that geez, you, you couldn't say didn't deserve an All-Ireland. I was talking to a man today, mm-hmm. Ali Rua, and uh, Ali said to ask you, I said, have you any question for him? And he said, just ask him what was the maddest thing he did after the All-Ireland celebrations. Just ask him that question, please. And I says, Jesus, oh, you couldn't, yeah, you, I'm not going to get a straight answer off him there, which I'll throw it out to you anyway, Noel. Yeah. The celebrations were good. You yeah. enjoyed it. They were, they were good. Um, they were good. I, 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 I'm not sure what the maddest thing was, but I'll, I, I'll always remember, Jesus, we went on holidays, the team holiday, and I was never a man that had put on an awful lot of weight. But Jesus, I don't know what we were doing wherever we were, but we said we'd weigh ourselves in on holidays. God almighty, tonight. I was about a stone and a half overweight. I nearly, I nearly, I swear to Christ, I nearly collapsed, but... It obviously, it, it obviously told that we were we were parting fairly hard in anyway. That's 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 a guarantee in anyway. But um, Irish, it is hard to know. Sure, you know to crack yourself. No, there were so many nights. Sure, very hard to know. Man, very what, hard to what, know. But there were good times. All right. Ah, brilliant. What did it mean to you to bring it back then to Kilimanjaro? Did you bring it back a couple of weeks after, a week after, or when did that? Yeah, happen? yeah, yeah. I'd say it was a couple of weeks after. But um, ah, geez, now we got a we got a great turnout in Kilimanjaro. No, to be fair, probably one of the biggest turnouts. Um. I sure it was massive, you know. Um, sure, I think it is funny now in Shawnee's, which which would be our local pub there. Um, I think you have a picture of the nineteen ninety team there now with the Sam Maguire, and there's actually a picture of Paddy there as well. I, I'm almost sure he's the Sam Maguire with him as well. And um, you're look just to have that up there now as well, you know. Uh, being a local man, it's 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 a nice one, yeah. 
It's yeah. nice, all right. Now to be fair, I, I'll I'll be shot unless I ask you about a uh, Galvin, like like you said about the rap there. He, yes, there was a little bit of nudging to and fro there for a few years. But I, in Jeez, fairness, uh, I'd say if he met up now, I'd say there'd be an awful lot of respect there as well because the two of you would always would would have a reputation. I think that wasn't fair because the two of you were well able to play football, mm. unbelievably well able. But it got hot and heavy, you know, uh, a few it, times, like. <clears throat> It did, it did, it did. To be fair, um, sure. I, I, I suppose. Look, my, my first time crossing Paul, I suppose, was, I'd say, back around two thousand and one. He actually wasn't on the carry panel at the time, and uh, we played UCC in a practice game, and uh, he was actually wing back that time. Yeah. Galvin, geez, I can always remember. We didn't tussle, but, uh I don't know what it was about it, but I I just felt that we just wanted to. How would I say it? Was just you could you could <laughs> feel the tension during the game. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I said my own mind, and no doubt if we'll meet down the road, there'll be some tango between the two of us. And sure, <laughs> lo and behold, that's the way that's the way it panned out. But um, you're a look to, to be fair to the man, Thomas. I I'd have great respect for him, and. Um, yeah. You know, obviously a brilliant footballer, brilliant footballer, and um, certainly a driving force on your team at the time. And um, I, I, one thing, I, I, I suppose, while we're on it, it's a going going off scale, a small bit, but like, and and you know, it's something that I always wanted to put out there. You know, you know, over the years, I've heard an awful lot of things, false things, really. You know, this kind of sledging, mm. which you know goes on, and um, you know, I, I've heard numerous things from people that he said certain things to me during the game personal things and um, you know I can categorically state anyway for both of us to be fair it goes both ways that he he never opened his mouth to me and and, and I was the same to him you know and um, I think it's only fair that you know that that's put out there as well you know I, I and to me you know that that's I, I'd show a huge respect to a guy that just puts it all out there gets on with it and to be fair the majority of you were the same you know I, I I won't say all of you know, but uh, the, the majority <laughs> of you were, were were the same, and um, but it, it's totally different now. Should she is what goes on now is is unbelievable. But yeah. um, but no, I'd have look. I know we had our our tosses or whatever, but I'd have huge respect for him as a footballer, and um, you know certainly a lot of what went down was probably blown out of proportion as small, but he um he's a guy that um. No, uh, certainly uh, for me anyway. He's a guy that I have huge respect for. But you're on that, on that, Tomas. You know, I, I just like <clears throat> I think it was a few few months ago. There, an idea came into my head. I was half thinking about bringing out my own uh, my own underpants range there, and I was <laughs> thinking about getting him on getting him on board there to collaborate with me. And, and I have the name, I have the name, and I'll made up that who are that designer crowd there again? D and G. Who are that? Who are they again? D and G. Uh, <laughs> Dalshin Cabana, yeah, to 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 say LNG anyway, Larry and Galvin anyway. That's the that's the brand name anyway. For time, I'm telling you, to me. I tell you, Noel, I'd say that underpants will put up a fair bit of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, help us! Uh, but I know I ruined I, I ruined with, with Galvin for years, and I do know. And uh, even I, I was hot ball, I'd be in regular contact with him, and he'd be he'd have nothing but the utmost respect because of all yeah, yeah. all the Cork fellas really because any fellow knows yes. that, that would go through UCC or whatever they'd have that respect there and it would always be there um, come here yeah. uh, say uh, since you've left you're still involved aren't you with the Cork lads are, are you still involved were you involved with the minors or were you involved? no no I, I, I was I was I, sta- I started I started with under 15s I suppose they're going back maybe five, five, five or six years ago now and um, I got involved in with the minors in for a couple of years mm-hmm. Um but you're being honest about Tomas, my I have zero experience in relation to coaching, and I suppose the big thing for me was to go in and see what the whole thing was about. And um, like having done it, geez, I've I've an unbelievable you know respect for for management teams and the time that goes into it. It's it's un it's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, you put more time into the outside of training sessions than you do in training sessions, mm-hmm. and um, like you know. <clears throat> if the question was asked, you know, would I go straight into training team or manager team when I give up? Um, uh, the answer would probably be no. I, I think I'd give it four or five years at least, um, because the, the the volume, the time, just 
everything. It's it's. I have a huge amount of respect for anyone that goes into management, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is. It is, it is all consuming, and people don't really see that. And then when you see the abuse that they, they get, or, no. or whatever, do you know, That's right. <laughs> Cork, no, this year, especially with the under 20s last year, and a great win against Dublin, and the talent that's coming through, yes. and the talent you'd see in the county, the future is bright enough mm-hmm. for them, isn't it? It is. It is. I, <clears throat> I suppose the big thing I see with them, Tomas, in the last year or two, um, you know. There's certainly a big culture shift there. Um, I would say over the last five or six years, the culture was all wrong there. And um, that, you know, it, it kind of starts from there really. Like, you know, you have to have a team that are buying into everything. And um, I felt they were they were getting that kind of a bit wrong, you know, at the time. And um, Ronan has definitely, you know, he's definitely moved things on a bit. And... Um, in relation to the caliber of player, I suppose over the last few years, then maybe maybe we Cork were caught a bit that way as well, you know, mm. which is that's the way the, 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 these things go on roundabouts. In relation, then I suppose to to the to what's coming through, they're certainly in a very healthy state in in that regard. But it goes back to our point, I suppose, when I was a minor, or whatever, making the transition from minor and on, uh, under twenty to senior, not it, it, it's it's a big step up, yeah. and um, it's not going to happen overnight from. But they're in a healthier state than a, a lot of other counties in, in regards to the influx of players that have coming through. But it's look, it's fine and well to have have all all Ireland winning underage teams. But it's it's what you do with them now going forward is going to be key. And um, I uh, if they are handled right and 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 as the fellow said, you know, put in the work, then then I would say maybe two or three years time you could see Cork possibly challenging. You know, mm-hmm. maybe for for an All Ireland quarter final, semi final place. You know. Yeah, I was just. I'm. I'm going to let you go now in, in a second. All the last kind okay. of thing was. Do you know the the way you said you came in there uh, after 2000, right? And if you look mm-hmm. at it now, and the young fellas, and what they with Sigerson and college and and under 20s and then senior, and the amount of work that goes into it, like yes, but like from the start mm-hmm. until the end, like were you saying, mm-hmm. Jesus, it is. It was a way harder for young fellas coming through now. It is a kind of a different life, say, and I was there in the two thousands as well. It like it's completely different, isn't yes. it? it? It it is. They live it a, is. They live a serious is, yeah. life now, don't they? An unbelievable life, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'd agree. I'd say just when we were finished up, the two of us, I, I, I'd imagine it really, really ramped up. Then you know, um, no, obviously there was there was a lot asked of us as well through our career, and and and, and you know there was a lot of work involved. The thing, but it really, really took a step up you know, over the last maybe five or six years. And, um, yeah, like, I, I just... The big thing for me, Tomas, is, is that, you know, enjoyment. Like, are they enjoying the thing? Yeah. And, um, you know, you'd have to ask that question. Like, when, you're, when your life is taken up more or less 24-7, you know, in, in, in the prime years of your life, yeah. you know, you must really, really want it, yeah. you know. And unless unless you really want it, like, you have... No business whatsoever, you know, being involved in the county team. I I believe at the moment, um, because it's just there is just too much involved in the thing. Yeah. But um, but they're great. Like be honest with you, you know, uh, <clears throat> in relation to the football that's being played at the moment, in relation to, you know, the players that are out there at the moment, there's some there's some serious serious footballers out there at the moment, and at, and athletes, and um, just fabulous players, and um, you know, football to me is. In a way, it can, gets a lot of stick, you know, at times or, or over, I suppose, the tactics that are being um, put in place and, and whatnot. But, you know, you have hugely talented and extremely athletic players there at the moment. And, and, and I believe, you know, football is in, in, in as good a place as it ever was. But, um, you know, just a small bit of the negativity is a bit annoying, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'd say you're like myself. There's a few, there's a few hairs out there, Noel, and I wouldn't like to be chasing them nowadays. There's some specimens of fellas. No, they wouldn't be good. <laughs> there's no doubt that. <laughs> no, here. God Almighty, no. Noel, um, I leave you go by. Uh, I, no problem, I really pass. appreciate you coming on, um, and uh, thanks no for being by. I never, I know for years, Kerry fellas have mighty respect for you. I've no doubt that if no you're problem. if you yourself and the other fellow brought out the LNG wife from City to be an instant hit and you'd you'd make good money yeah. out of it as well. Um no one by Gary Mahagat by Agar. No about it. Father Mass. All right. Slang of all right. Slant, 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 slant.